Morning everyone. Welcome to the class of Micro Radar Engineering. The subject code is EC074 and this one is lecture number 19. And in this lecture, we will discuss about the micro measurements. I'm Humanshu Nagpal from EC department of AKGC, Gajibad. First, we will discuss about the micro bench. And this micro bench is a what? Micro bench setup this figure which is which i am showing this micro bench is micro bench for measuring the various parameters of waveguide components and this micro bench consists of many equip many equipments or apparatus that is first one is the you will see that this is a normal bench setup, general bench setup in every experiment of microwave this maximum 90 percent setup of this will be same and we always have we always include some another waveguide components to, to measure the parameters of the that device so this one is a general setup of micro bench first one is the signal generator which generates the microwave signal and this for the experiment purpose we always used to have a Clistron as a signal generator and this clistron we have discussed already that is the reflex clistron clear in the next lecture in the next next device we used to have a variable oblique precision and attenuator this attenuator what attenuates the power means reduces the power going into the going to the destination side clear so this one is the variable attenuator precision attenuator this variable attenuator is what this can be varied accordingly and this precision attenuator is that in which we will decide how much i have to provide the attenuation but in variable attenuator we cannot get the what we cannot set the much of the attenuation clear we cannot set the uh, we just vary the attenuation so that the our desired output will be obtained but in this precision attenuator accuracy is higher and in this if i want to provide attenuation of 20 db then we just just this set to us 20 db and it will provide attenuation to 20 db clear next one is the frequency meter and this frequency meter <coughs> measures the frequency of the signal which is generated by the signal generator clear now in the first due, due in signal generator we and between the attenuator we always used to have what isolator this isolator provides what provides a uniline path means the wave generated by the signal generator it will be what transferred to the de destination side but the reflected wave the reflected wave from the destination to the resource side will not be passed to the signal generator so isolator is always used to used in after just after the signal generator so that reflected waves will not disturb the source clear because this isolator we have already discussed that this isolator provides a uniline path it provides the transmission in only one direction that is from source to destination clear now at the end uh, after frequency meter we used to have a slotted line in the slotted line station slotted line is a carriage which consists of what probe and in this what longer uh, in this what electric field will be there in this uh, rectangular waveguide and probe is inserted into the rectangular waveguide 
and this probe is penetrate into the rectangular waveguide of this slot of uh, this one slotted section section and this probe is what is a crystal detector probe which demodulates the signal and this demodulated signal will can be seen on to the CRO clear and at the end we used to have a match termination and this match termination what this match termination will provide a impedance matching to the network so that reflected wave will not get will not insert into the microwave components so all the waves which is getting from this to this side and the impedance matching is always provided with the matching termination if impedance matching will not be provided then the reflected waves will be goes back to the source side but it will not affect the source side because there will be a isolator but we always prefer to have a mass termination so that the so that what demodulation can be take place easily and this slotted light section also consists of what uh, crystal director mount probe and this, the probe is connected to the can be connected to the VLWR meter can be connected to the power meter can be connected to the CRO clear so this one is the uh, general introduction of the microwave setup first one is single generator as the name implies it generates a microwave signal in order of what few milliwatt and we always in the ex experiment purpose we always used to have a crystal amplifier reflex crystal amplifier or a gun diode oscillator clear now precision and as attenuator this is the attenuator which selects the desired frequency and confines the output from 0 to 50 db this is variable and can be adjusted according to the requirement but in the variable attenuator this attenuator sets the amount of attenuation it can be understood as a fine adjustment of values where the readings can be checked against the values of the precision attenuator next one is the isolator this removes the signal that is not required to reach the detector mount and this allows the signal to pass through the waveguide only in one direction which we have discussed in the last slide that it is a uniline path it will isolator is just used to provide the is to use to provide the protection to the what protection to the source side from the reflected voltage or reflected signal now this frequency meter used to measure the frequency of the signal with this frequency the signal can be adjusted to obtain its resonance frequency we will we will discuss that how the frequency meter works and how the uh, how can we measure the vswr using a vswr meter now next one is the crystal detector this crystal detector probe and crystal detector mounts are indicated in the above figure this one this one this is a crystal detector this crystal detector probe is inserted into the what slotted se section and in the slotted section in the top slotted section as electric fields are longitudinally going towards this side this slotted section this probe provides a what coupling between the intensity of electric field and the probe clear so this crystal detector demodulates the <coughs> signal actually where the detector is connected to the through a probe to the bound this is used to demodulate the signal now the standing wave attenu indicator standing this standing wave indicator provides the reading of the standing wave standing waves means the waves if i say the wave is passing through like this one and the waves which is get reflected back so it provides the what attenuation and when it provides attenuation standing waves will be there means the reflected waves provides a, a, are known as the uh, just ratio of v max divided by v minimum is equal to what st our standing wave ratio 
This standing wave voltmeter provides the reading of the standing wave ratio in dB. This the waveguide is sorted by the some gap to adjust the clock cycle of the signal. The signal is transmitted by the waveguide forward through VNC cable to the VSW meter or CRO to measure its characteristics. Means this one, this probe is can be connected to the SW SWR meter, can be connected to the power meter, can be connected to a CRO, just as our requirement. So this one, see this one, reflects cholesterol. <coughs> this is fan just to cool down the heating effect. Heating of the heating generated by the inside the reflex, reflex cholesterol to cool down. This is isolator. This one is what attenuator, and this one is frequency meter, and this one is what slotted slotted section. And in the slotted section, this one is slotted section, slotted line. Clear? Because this line consists of what uh, rectangular tube, and this one is crystal detector. This crystal detector consists of a probe which will inserted into the penetrate into the this rectangular tube and in, in further this is what the device which is used to be tested and the device this device is known as what directional coupler clear and see this probe can be connected to the VSWR meter or this probe can also be connected to what sorry <coughs> sorry uh, this probe, the device which is to be detected, is this probe can be connected to what? Detector mount at the output of the device. Clear? And this probe is not can uh, this probe is not can be not, cannot be connected to the CRO. I have this I have wrongly mentioned here, <coughs> but this probe crystal detector is used to only demodulate the signal. Now in the <coughs> in the today's lecture we will discuss also the power measurement. This microwave power measurement is measured in the average power at any position in the waveguide. This power measurement can be of three types: measurement of low power, that is from 0 0.01 milliwatt to 10 milliwatt. Example is the technique which we used for measuring the low power, that is bolometric technique. The and the next one is the measurement of medium power that is from 10 milliwatt to 1 milliwatt 1 watt the technique we used that is the calorimeter technique and the measurement of high power which is greater than what 10 watt the technique which we used for measuring the high power that is a calorimeter watt meter now first one now see this one this microwave power meter this power meter which consists of a what power sensor which converts the microwave power to a heat energy now as we know that the some waves are going into the device and this device get heated up and this rise in temperature can be noted down and which will what corresponds to the input power so this microwave power consists of what power sensor which converts the microwave power into a heat energy and this corresponding due to the heat energy the corresponding temperature rise provides a change in the electrical parameter resulting in a output current in a low frequency circuitry and this change in the electrical parameters can be indicates the uh, always indicates the what power or can be collaborated uh, can be calibrated into the power converted into the power and the, this high power this was for low power and this high power can be measured using a microwave calorimeter in which temperature rise of the load provides a direct measure of the power absorbed by the load. Now see this one, first one is a measurement of low power and this measurement of low power is around what 0 0.01 milliwatt to 10 milliwatt. So now see here <coughs> which we use what in this used what bolometer. And this bolometer can be of what? This bolometer can be of what? Thermistor. And this bolometer is a device which is used for the low microwave. The element used in bolometer 
could be positive or negative temperature coefficient means the element which you use in the bolo meter that is can be of positive negative temperature coefficient means if i say the uh, if input is void the temperature can be rises and if input is void the temperature can be decreases so any of them can be used in bolo meter but change in the resistance proportional to the microwave power applied for measurement now see this one this one is what bridge and you will see here this is a bridge r1 r2 r4 by r3 means r1 by r4 equal to what r2 by r3 clear in the initial condition but as we provide the means when there is no input to this one r1 by r4 is always equal to r4 r2 by r3 giving a galvanometer as a zero indicator now as it provides a as if you provide the microwave power this microwave power <coughs> gives a change in the temperature of the this resistance and this rise of temperature in this <coughs> results in change in the resistance of this bridge this arm and when the there is a change in the resistance of this arm means it will dis unbalance the bridge on balancing the bridge on unbalancing the bridge the galvanometer meter galvanometer will not show the what zero reading on balancing the bridge we have to what vary the r5 and when we vary the r5 means variable resistor to provide the galvanometer as a zero reading this battery has to be used and this battery power can be calibrated is proportional to what microwave power now see this one this microwave power is applied to its to the this arm will change the bolometer resistance causing an unbalance in the bridge from its initial balance condition under a zero incident phase <coughs> now the battery is variable which is varied to obtain the balance when imbalance is caused by the behavior of the bolometer this adjustment is made to used in dc meter what is proportional to the microwave power clear now similarly we are we used to have a measurement of medium power in this what in this a special load is used a special load is used to maintain the specific value of the specific heat clear this power the power to be measured is applied to its input which proportionally changes the output temperature of the load means the when the power is provided to the load clear so uh, means the power which is supplied at the input is will be what proportional to the changes of the output temperature of the load means clear <coughs> and this change in temperature this difference in temperature rise gives specifies the input power to the load clear uh, now next one is the measurement of the high power and this measurement of high power is around 10 watt to 50 kilowatt in this high power measurement can be done by what calorimetric method in which involves the conversion of microwave energy into a heat this microwave energy is converted into the heat when it is converted to the heat energy and it will cause a change in temperature this about absorbing this heat in a fluid usually water and then measuring the temperature rise of the fluid this temperature rise of the fluid corresponds to the what input power provided to the fluid clear now see this one similarly uh, now see this one this these are the methods to measure the high power first one is the static calorimeter calorimeter this static calorimeter consists of what 50 ohm coaxial cable which is filled by a low c dielectric load this load has what sufficient isolation from its surrounding means this is a low c dielectric this one is a low c dielectric and it consists of what input coaxial cable this is a input power i am providing to this one clear when i am providing to this one it will what cause what it will cause what change in the temperature of this this one 
change in the temperature of this one and when there is a change in the temperature of this one p equal to what p equal to what 4.187 into m into my cp into my t divided by t this is output power and this output power equal to 4.187 m into my cp into my t upon my small t small t is what time for which the input power is there in between the this fluid clear may m is what mass of the thermometric medium this mass of the thermo thermometric medium <coughs> this one clear cp is the specific heat and t is the rise in temperature rise in temperature theek okay? hai now see next one is the next method is the circulating calorimeter in this we provide a input pump in water water is pumping in clip and on pumping in the water and this was the input power the this water initially when there is no input power this water goes to this one and it will reaches to this one so input temperature can be measured and the output temperature can be measured but when input power is there when input power is there input water is heated is absorbs the heat by the microwave power and this it will what it will give the rise in temperature it will change the temperature of this water and this outlet temperature can be measured using the thermometer here and the water can be flowed out from this cavity and this flowed out temperature uh, water will be what of absorbing a having a microwave content and having a higher temperature so this power output is equal to what 4.187 into me v into me d into me cp into me t watt v specifies the rate of flow of power of water t is the temperature rise d is what specific gravity of fluid and cp is what <coughs> cp is what specific heat Thank you for the today's lecture